Do you have that on video? Yeah. You have nice. that on video. <laughs> the tag team fucking bullshit right there. <laughs>
You can do grabs, but the thing is, is that that starts to get into that questionable, they're only grabbing you, so should you do so much damage? Uh, and like I said, this entire series is built off of, there is absolutely no uh, question. This is an attack that can do trauma to you. Uh, and why is that? And so what happens is a front choke usually happens when I'm wrapping around his throat here, my fingers wrap around the backside of the neck, thumb wraps here, and then I crank across. So I'm just pulling this in this direction. Now you can do this one handed to test out because she gets weird like that. And what happens is that's there. If I have both hands directly around his throat, I would do the exact same thing, pull in and then start to squeeze. The initial grabbing or snatching up of the neck is an extension. So what happens is I grab and now what happens is here. He has an abnormally thicker neck um, because he does weird stuff to, to strengthen his neck. Um, but usually that's real easy for you to wrap your fingers around the backside of their neck, thumbs interlock, and then you're just trying to separate. Obviously, any type of trauma that's done there uh, is going to cause internal swelling. That swelling could be dangerous, obviously, if you can't breathe and bad things happen to you. And so this is the threat that we're trying to deal with. Also, it is something directly from the front that is a common motion. So what happens is me grabbing him by his throat is very similar to me grabbing him, is very similar to me striking him, and is very similar to me pushing him. And so what happens is because of that, it allows us to uh, teach one technique and then start to branch off of that. Uh, so the first thing that we work on is the understanding that if I'm talking to someone or I'm moving around or whatever it is, as soon as he reaches up towards me here, my reaction is like, no, I don't want to do that. Like yeah, <clears throat> the, the idea that someone's going to grab my, grab my throat and I'm going to lean into this is kind of silly. No one should grab your throat unless you want them to grab your throat. Um, that's a different video. But the thing is, is that whenever he's reaching up to grab, your natural reaction is usually going to be something of a flinch to move directly away. Uh, so let's talk about if they make a positive contact. Positive contact would be here, and he's locking, so actually grab the squeeze. What I wanna do is I wanna squeeze my shoulder like that. So we're here, back up just a little bit right here. Okay, so what I wanna do is as that happens, my chin is down, my shoulder comes up, and then I'm just turning just a little bit. What it does is it compresses the lock. So I'm using my trap to lift, and now I'm gonna just use my shoulder off to the side to break that. It's a very, very easy thing to do. You're probably doing it naturally anyway, so as he's going up, I'm gonna be doing that. That is a uh, defense to the initial attack. So always remember, regardless of what the end result is of your technique, you have multiple goals or milestones. The first milestone is to make sure that you are safe and you're protecting yourself against that attack. Your second milestone would probably be to counterattack or to continue damage so that they don't just immediately attack you again. So to teach that first part, I'm gonna get their hands off of my neck. All I'm doing is I'm teaching a defensive position where my shoulders crunch, and then I'm just gonna use my shoulder to press away. Um, this is very similar to like maybe a necktie where I'm just using that arm to kind of shrug to the side. It's the same thing. I'm just bringing my shoulders up. You also notice that my stance kind of widens out. You may have to step back to gain balance to do that. If you are pinned up against the wall, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to have you move your shoulders backwards, brace against the wall and then go there. But we'll talk about that in a, in a, a video in the future, but what happens is as this is coming up, that's one, okay? We go over that, everybody practices it, they go, ooh, my hand is, uh, you know, that, that gets crunched. The other thing is it's a real choke, okay? So you'll notice that he's not putting his hand on my shoulder and he's not giving me a massage, okay? Because that's not gonna do anything, I can't break that. His thumb has to actually grab my throat, he has to really grip, and then in turn, that is gonna make it easier for me to crush his fingers and then roll that. The more realistic the choke is, the easier it is for you to destroy the integrity of that grab by crushing his fingers side to side. The more flimsy the choke is, 
there's no real reason you can just like push their hand off and say, don't do that. Um, <clears throat> now let's talk about structural damage. Everyone that has watched my uh, videos knows that I like breaking things on people when they touch me. So how do we do that? As this is raising up, my natural reaction is to move away anyways. My wrist is gonna strike inside here, and wherever his elbow is, I don't really care for. All I'm gonna do is I close my hand and I lock it to my body, so where my elbow is right into my rib cage, and then I'm just going to hyperextend their arm. So his safety is he bends his arm and muscular tension. Obviously, we've trained together, so he's already doing that. A real scenario off of this, his arm would be extended, so that hyperextension would pop his arm uh, there. For training, what we do is we go here. So as he does that, I can actually hit, and there's not gonna be much damage that's done to him because, well, he has reinforced that grab, where it wouldn't be reinforced in a real scenario. To add leverage to this, I will also step away. So you'll notice that with this line that's across, we're here, you can actually see it on the mats. As he's attacking here, I'm actually moving out of the way completely facing the other direction on my defense there, okay? So what happens is we're here, he goes up for the choke, I go for that break, and then I'm working there. The moment that that hyperextension pops, he lets go, he moves off to the side, that's it, that's done. Um, is there anything to add to that for, from a law enforcement side? Like, if I continued how, how much trouble would I technically get into? Well, uh, if you've caused damage to somebody's arm legally because they were trying to choke you, and a choke is a deadly force situation, so you're allowed to use more violent force in that situation. Uh, if they walk away or fall down and then you continue to attack them, then you might find yourself uh, facing some type of legal issues just right. because, you know. And it's a natural thing. We see it a lot where... Like, you know, somebody attacks you, you react, you do exactly what you're supposed to do, and then you look over and now you're mad. Yeah. And you're like, you just attacked me, and then you want more. And they'll, and that, go, they'll that, chase them down, kick them, whatever that they're gonna do. And so in, in the legal uh, thought process, when somebody looks at that, who's actually trying to get you in trouble, right. what they're doing is they're identifying the fact that, yes, they attacked you, yes, you defended, that was cool. But the moment that that person was fairly incapacitated or didn't want any more, you now become the attacker, right. so you were in the wrong to attack them, and any type of trauma that's done afterwards, you're liable for, yeah. right? So, <clears throat> first off, everyone knows that I'm kind of weird about that kind of subject. The thing is, is that I want you to come home safe to your family, regardless of that. I also believe that bad guys don't just stop so if you have a lull in uh, action, that there is an opportunity to make sure that they cannot actually continue. This just might be in visual, it might look like they don't want anymore, but it just might be shock. And then in turn what happens is that anger will build up and they'll get up and now they're attacking you. They are now in a fight. And if you didn't do enough damage at the beginning of that, then you could be in a real bad scenario because before they were attacking you, didn't think that you were gonna defend. And how do I know that? I know that because they wouldn't have grabbed you in that way. So a lot of times I get questions of like, well, what if he knows you're gonna break his arm when you know he extends his arm? It's like, well, he wouldn't have done that. He would have done something else. So the thing is, is that you surprise them, you cause trauma, and then what happens is maybe you didn't do enough damage to him. If you were to attack him legally, they could talk about that. But the thing is, is if you didn't do that and he gets up and he's a better fighter than you, then it could get into a bad scenario. So there's a lot of this um, intellectual debate, those uh, Starbucks questions, as I like to call them, uh, where you're just trying to talk about something that really doesn't matter in a real violent scenario. You do what you do so that you can defend yourself and your family, and then you move on. But if all you wanted to do was learn how to stop somebody from choking you, one hand or two, it works with both hands, because what happens is as I'm here and I break, he's going to let go with the other side. Okay, and so what happens is that hyperextension here drives in, I can drive him to the ground, I can transition to something, whatever, but at the moment of popping his arm, 
Uh, we've had a lot of people do this over the years. This is a, a technique that we taught to the military over and over and over and over uh, when they would go overseas, any type of extension of the arm. Uh, we've got reports back, usually causes a compound fracture, usually renders them unconscious. If anything, it just makes sure that their arm is completely destroyed so that they don't have the ability to use it. So it's a good technique. It also teaches you balance and leverage. You have to understand that those that come to you to train, they don't actually have a prerequisite skill level that you can just go across the board on. So I get guys that are collegiate wrestlers. I also get people who that joined the military and all they did up to the military was um, play video games and they've never played contact sports or anything like that. So in both in the class, I have both people. So how do I actually even the playing field a little bit with techniques to teach them or to reinforce habits that they already have. So this is the first technique. The second technique would be a rear choke. Let's get into that right now. Mm. 